Good morning, everybody. We are live. Come on, join me. Hey, it is 9.40 a.m. on this gorgeous, sunny, warm Monday morning. It is the 22nd day of April. I have a truck coming in. 22nd day of April, 2019. Come on, come on, come on. Hope everybody had a blessed Resurrection Sunday. Celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Hi, Brother Scott. Love you, buddy. Going to look at tons of scripture this morning. Um, focusing on actually two, and then I've got a lot of reference scriptures that I jotted down for your info. But want to look at a few verses today part of our devotion the title of this devotion this morning is simply as he said and it was actually caught my eye this morning well actually yesterday we were looking at um, some scripture Sunday night um, we got to preach over at Dusty's mommy and daddy's church and um, just thought I would share this thought with you today. Um, I don't know about you, but there was so many things that I this past week that um, God's revealed to me um, through Holy Week, and um, just so many new thoughts that I've never really thought about before. And um, one of the major, major ones was when Jesus cleaned out the temple. That just done something to me. I never realized, you know, when he was cleaning the temple, that he was technically what he was doing was sanctifying the temple for his for the use. And then you could see through the week what had taken place after Jesus sanctified that temple. And what a message that is, that when Jesus Christ sanctifies our hearts, then it's set apart for God's use. And until we're sanctified, set apart from worldly things, then we're never going to be able to be used by God in a way that we need to be used. Um, anyway, that's one thing that I took away. And um, I want to share with you just for a, a few moments. Um, <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 28, you can read verses 1 through 6, um, actually 1 through 7 if you want, but focusing on verse 6. And when the women had come to the tomb to anoint Jesus, they came to the garden and the angel appeared, and you know the story in the scripture, the angel had, uh, had appeared to them, and the keeper that was by the stone, you know, seeing the angel that was full of light and, and his garment was glowing and they were so afraid that they fainted. And the angel spoke to the women, and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, and, and simply said, you know, why are you here? Why seek you the living among the dead? He's not here. He rose as he said. And I wanted to focus on that thought for just a moment. As he said, and Lord willing, we're not going to try to keep you real long, but there are some scriptures that I want to give you um, just to let you know that, you know, when Jesus speaks the word, that his word is truth and that we can depend and we can rely on his word. And we find many of verses of Scripture throughout the Word of God. I'm not going to give you nowhere near all of them. But, you know, where Jesus had promised that He was coming again. He told the disciples time after time. Look in Mark chapter 8, verse 31. It says, And He began to teach them <clears throat> um, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. These are the words of Christ. Look in Mark chapter 9, verse 9, and it says pretty much the same thing, that as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. 
And then go into Mark chapter 10, verses 32, 33, and 34. And it says this, and this is the words of Christ. And they were in the way um, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were amazed. And, um, and as they followed, they were afraid, and he took again, and I can't read my writings, and began to tell them what things should happen unto him. Now listen to the words of Christ in verse 33. Saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and, to, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priest and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. Now listen, verse 34. And they shall mock him, and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. Look that up. It is the word of words of Christ. And then we can go in and look at some of the promises that Jesus had made about being comforted with the Holy Spirit. Look in John chapter 14, verse 16, and it simply says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and he may abide with you forever. Go into Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And then you can go into Acts chapter 2, verses 2 and 4, and you can see where the Holy Spirit had come on the day of Pentecost and filled them with the Holy Ghost. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. And again, you can find that they were um, filled with the Holy Ghost. So Christ had said the same exact thing. Said, if I would be lifted up, he would draw all men unto me. You know, all these promises that he has made, do you notice that Jesus has fulfilled every promise that he's ever made to you and I? And I want you to continue to look at this because I can't give you every promise that Christ made. I can't give you every promise that God made, you know, because we'd be here all day long. But every promise that he had made, he fulfilled. He told the disciples, I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be brutalized. I'm going to be put to death. But on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And when they came into the garden to anoint his dead body, the angel said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He arose. He's alive, just like he said. You know, so he fulfilled that promise. He said when he talked to the disciples after he was ready to ascend to his father. He told the disciples, It's expedient that I go, for if I do not go, the Holy Spirit cannot come. And he was telling them, You will be comforted with the Holy Spirit. Just like he said. Look at some of these other promises that Jesus had made. John chapter 6, verse 37, and it says, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then in Hebrew chapter 13, verse 5, it says, I will never leave leave you or forsake you. All these promises that Jesus had given to his disciples are, are cast on to us. He's given these same promises to us. And folks, he's fulfilled every promise. So this leads me to one last verse that I want to share with you. In Revelation chapter 22 verse 12, and Jesus said, and behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. <clears throat> Let me pose this question to you this morning. I apologize for my voice. We had a long weekend. We've had three services yesterday that we sang and preached in, and, and, and I've gotten a little happy, and my voice is not as strong as I want it to be. But listen to this. If Jesus said that he was going to die... And then on the third day, rise again. And that happened. If Jesus said that I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send you a comforter, and that came to pass, 
If Jesus promised, like I read to you, that if we come to him, he would no wise cast us out, that He, if we will confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If he says that I will never leave you or forsake you, that he would be with us, even when he ascended to heaven, he was still part of our life. So if he's promised these things and they happened, it came to pass, then what makes us think that he's not going to make good on the promise in Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 where he says, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Folks, what I'm trying to tell you today is God's word is true. And he's promised that he's coming again to receive us. So why in the world would we live a life not prepared for Christ to come again. Folks, He's coming again. There are so many people that's out there in this world that are proclaiming to be saved, but they're living their life as if Jesus is never going to return. They're not, be, they're not prepared for His returning. I see it day in and day out. Wherever I go, it seems like people who's confessing and professing to be saved, but yet they're partaking in worldly things. They're speaking in... in, 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 in language that we should never use and and they're doing things that's not pleasing to God you may say oh you're meddling or oh you're judging no I'm not I've got eyes I've got good sense I can tell what's right and what's wrong according to the Word of God and we need to live above sin and the only way that we can live above sin is to call out on Jesus Christ and follow his path listen I'm not perfect I make mistakes but I find myself I do my best work when I'm following Jesus Christ I'm at my best when I read His Word and keep His commandments. Without that, I'm, I'm just a sinner on my way to a devil's hell. But through Jesus Christ. But listen, folks, today, just give you an idea. Everything that He's promised has come to pass. And He said that I will come again. And folks, listen, He's done just that. He rose from the grave. He ascended to His Father. And in a few moments, we don't know when, it might be another hundred years, it might be tomorrow, it might be now. But according to eternity, according to everything that's happening, I want you to know, everybody's trying to get a hold of me, I knew they would as soon as I go live. But listen, I want you to know today that eternity is forever. And even if we lived a thousand years on this life, on this earth, I want you to know that it's just a, a, a time, just a vapor compared to eternity. Jesus is coming back and he said, behold, I come quickly. Everybody says, oh, he's returning. He's on his way. Listen, he's not on his way because when he comes to get us, it's going to be in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. My question to you this morning is, are you ready to go? If he's kept his promises and if he said everything that he said and it's come to pass, why would you not think he's going to come again? Question today is, are you ready to meet the Lord? For Jesus is coming back. Be ready because he's coming one day. Listen, that's all I got for you, Lord willing. We'll be back tomorrow with another devotion. We're going to look at um, the, the post resurrection you know after jesus come from the grave listen when he was on the cross he said it is finished his plan was finished he's not finished there's still a lot of things that he worked out even after he rose from the grave and we're going to cover that this week lord willing so listen thanks for watching be prepared he's coming back just like he said love you god bless you